thought it would be useful to take a quick look at at least at the ray tracing and see why do these comp use of compound lenses, so multiple lenses, uh, result in what we hopefully saw, or at least if you haven't yet, can build and see. Going back over it, it looks like the microscope here does is the one that works better than the telescope, although both do function pretty much as intended. Um, but let's let's see how. So a microscope, we start with a lens and putting an object really close to the focal length, so just outside the focal length. There's sort of a sweet spot with a lens anywhere from twice the focal length and in that you're actually going to see magnification. Now the image will be different depending on whether it's inside or outside the focal length, but all of those magnify, they make the object bigger. So when we trace this out, we've got one line, I'm, I'm just going to do two because it's always hard to make three meet at the exact right spot. Um, if you're trying to be really careful, it's not a bad idea because that'll show you how close you are. If they all three meet, you can be really confident. But I draw the one through the center, one parallel, and then down through the other focal point, and that, of course, becomes our image from the uh, first lens, which we'd usually, what do we call that one? Not the, is that the objective? Yeah, the objective lens of a microscope. Um, very often in a real microscope, these are going, it's going to be multiple lenses down here, maybe in oil between them, and so pretty complicated rather than just a single one. But even this one definitely magnifies what we're looking at, even, even though it's outside the focal length. What kind of image would this produce? A real. real image. They're actually meeting there, somewhere in the tube of the microscope. Then we take this and we use this image as an object for another lens, which is where the compounding comes in. But that's going to get way too big to put on that one sheet. So here we are, just the same thing we started with. We use this as the object for our next lens, but we're going to put that inside the focal length of the next lens. It would be possible to just put this, the focal length right here, and then uh, kind of flip it back over, but we're going to get greater magnification with having this inside the focal length. Uh, tracing those out, of course, one goes through that way, another goes through there, and never do the two meet in real space. So as we've learned, we've got to trace both of those refracted uh, lines back one straight back there, one straight back there, and we can see somewhere way over to the side those are going to meet, and that's going to be one really big image by the time they do meet. So the second lens is using our first image as its object and creating a virtual image of it, but that I virtual image is really, really big. This is also the reason why when you've worked with microscopes, moving the, the slide to the left actually moves your image to the right because it's inverted. So it's a little harder to get the controls of. But obviously it does really work. So this produces an eventual image that is virtual. We couldn't project this. Um, we can get optics, either our eye or some other camera out here to take a picture of that virtual image. It's inverted from the original, but it's also greatly enlarged. And obviously, we, the stuff we are used to looking at cells and uh, various little critters that infect us couldn't be seen well without it. So that's one. And then the second one, this flip page of that, is actually a telescope. So instead of starting with something very, very close to our first focal point, we start with something extremely far away from our first focal point, like so. That's just because that's as big as I could make it on the screen. Obviously, if we're looking at an astronomical thing, it's even much, much bigger than this. Um, when we look at these, we've got rays coming off of this that are nearly parallel. And again, that's they're not nearly as parallel in my drawing as they would be in real life. But when we do that, they come in and they're going to focus right around that focal point. And you're going to get an image here that's actually quite small compared to the original. 
and it's going to be very close to the focal point. So the farther this thing is away, if we look, let's see if I can draw on this. Uh, no, I won't. I don't. No. That was a neat effect, so I'm going to save that for later. There it is. Um, if we look at the. Well, I still want to. Yeah, I still want to see it. Um, if we look at the formula here, our lens formula, one over f dolly. On that equals one over the object distance. I have to go really slowly so it doesn't. Turn on me. Plus one over the image distance. As this image distance gets closer and closer to what is effectively infinity, this term gets closer and closer to zero, so that our image distance is very, very close to our focal length. That would also affect the magnification and actually make it very small because when we're considering we're looking at a very a distant star that star is huge but our image is quite small and then we're going to use that image just like before there it is um, as our next object and we're going to use our second lens as a magnifying glass so we put that image just inside the focal length we can move that around and then trace it out. And as before, those two aren't going to meet in real space, so we have to put them back here. And they're gonna meet way off to the side again. So it ends up being kind of a similar image. It is virtual still, way off, and not in real space. We need our own lens to be able to bring these rays together. Um, it's inverted again. Same problem with telescopes as with microscopes. If you wanna to move to the left, you have to move to the right sort of deal. But is the image enlarged? Is it? Yeah. It's, and that's part of the problem and one thing I had to remind myself of when you were using your telescopes yesterday. That image is actually not enlarged because we're looking at a star that's enormous. The image we see is not enlarged. It's not bigger than that star. So why is it useful? Because it, appears to be closer. it does appear to be closer. We're not magnifying the actual size of the object in this. We're magnifying the angle it takes up in our view. So that's like bringing it closer. It's definitely magnifying it over what we see with the unaided eye. But if we can see it and it's just a tiny point in our view, well, now instead of a tenth of a degree in our total view, it might be 10 degrees. So it might appear 10, 100 times larger to us, even though the image itself is still much, much smaller than the original object. So that's the basics of how the, the two lenses will work together in the different things. Um, Galileo and, and other astronomers um, found that sort of the, the flatter the lens is, the better the quality of the image. But the flatter the lenses, as you've seen, the longer the focal lengths, which mean you need much longer and longer and longer telescopes, which is why we saw some of those videos with the, you know, the 90 foot long telescope that's a tube and that's essentially just these two lenses that are nearly flat because that improves the image quality, but in order to get reasonable magnification, then it needs to be really, really long. 